Hey Internet, just some retro gamer here. Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo is an amazing game and probably my favorite Zelda game overall. But haven't you ever wished you can explore the entire land of Hyrule on your own terms? I don't know, maybe find some items out of order, swim in some puddles you probably weren't meant to, bring Zelda along for the trip? Well, that's exactly what we aim to do in today's Code Breaker. Let's break some code in Zelda A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The Exploration Glitch, sometimes called the Under Over Underworlds Glitch, is a super easy glitch that lets you explore the interior maps from the comfort of your very own glitchy lair. First, come to a ledge you can jump off. Then, jump and save and quit before you touch the ground. Next, load up your save and be careful not to take any damage. Go to a room that has multiple layers, like this first room left of the entrance hall in Hyrule Castle. Let an enemy bump into you and voila, you're ready to explore the seedy and often glitchy underworld of Hyrule. There's a teeny tiny chance that you could completely destroy your save data and maybe even damage your cartridge to the point where you might have to remove the save battery in order to fix it. So something to keep in mind. I personally never experienced it, but some people on the internet said they have. Best used with caution. Sometimes a rainy day changes how we perceive the world. Or, in the case of Link to the Past, it actually changes the world around us. All we have to do is perform the exploration glitch before escaping the dungeon with Zelda and find a room to exit from. Once on the overworld, you'll notice that the rain hasn't quite stopped. There are no NPCs or enemies either, or heart pieces, or pretty much anything for that matter. So you're free to explore at your leisure. Just be sure to avoid this area around your home, or <laughs> uh, this will happen. <laughs> Whoa! Talk about being thrown for a loop! Well, at least there's nothing stopping you from going through the desert dungeon, so you don't even need the Book of Medora. Now that's not too shabby. Besides the obvious lack of enemies and NPCs, there is one strange thing of note. If you go to the Lost Woods, you'll find that the Master Sword is missing and in, in its place is a single Dark World enemy. <sighs> Great, we created yet another convoluted timeline to add to this series, as if there weren't enough. Have you ever tried to outrun your boomerang? <laughs> Lord knows I have, and I'm pretty sure you have too. But in Zelda Link to the Past, if you do it long enough, it'll start running out of steam and slowly follow behind you if you keep walking. Nothing to see here, just a hero and his pet boomerang going for a walk around Kakariko Village, you know. Same old, same old, nothing to be concerned with here. It's a pointless glitch, but <laughs> I thought it was fun nonetheless. Oh man, I remember as a kid having so much trouble grabbing the Moon Pearl from the Tower of Hera. Had I known about this glitch, things would have been much, much easier. And it's pretty easy to do. All you need to do is drop a bomb. Then, dash towards the wall just before it starts flashing. If you've timed it just right, you'll bounce back and then soar over the gap to reach your prize. You know, I always knew Link was... da bomb Oh my god, these are actually... these are actually getting worse. I can 100% can confirm that. Just be sure to have plenty of hearts in reserve, as mistakes are definitely quite costly. Ah, now this is a classic glitch from the Nintendo Code Vault. First, grab the magic mirror and the moon pearl, if you so desire, from the Tower of Hera. No need to grab the pendant unless you really want to. Next, make your way to this broken bridge in the Dark World. Get as close as you can to the edge and use your mirror. While Link is still flashing, move about a pixel forward. And if you did it just right, you'll be able to use the mirror again manually once you're sent back to the Dark World. Do so, and then exit the warp completely. And then, step backward slowly into the warp. If you position things just right, you'll be sitting on top of the edge and can simply jump down. 
just make your way south and leap off the mountains. <laughs> you know, as one does. Again, you can do this without the Moon Pearl, but you might find it furry difficult to deal with enemies. <laughs> Alright, so you got the Master Sword, but you just can't wait to temper it, huh? <laughs> I've got you covered on that one. All we need is the Magic Mirror, and a whole lot of patience. Start by using the Magic Mirror just below the rocks. In the Light World, make small movements to move Link closer to the ladder while using the mirror. Basically what this does is offset the mirror warp, allowing you to use it in spots that you wouldn't normally be able to. Eventually, you'll get to this point where you're basically in the rocks. But here comes the really tricky part. Hold left to jump off the ledge and use the mirror on the very frame that Link begins to jump. Don't press anything and then return once again to the Dark World. And if you timed it just right, you can walk past the stones and claim your... uh... frog. From here, just walk up to the smithy's house and get your sword tempered. Not too shabby, if you have the patience for it. This simple trick uses the exploration glitch. Go to the cave under the blacksmith's home, jump off the edge and save and quit. Then simply return to the cave, being careful not to get hit or dash into anything. Once you've reached the cave, dash into this wall and you'll fall through the floor. Now carefully make your way around the room, otherwise you might just leap back into the cave and then you have to retry it. Simply leap out of the wall in front of the altar and use the magic dust. And of course, we can't just exit the cave through normal means, right? Because why would we be able to do that? Simply save and quit, restart your game, and bada boom, your half magic is ready to go. Not too shabby at all. And now, enjoy your half cost magic items. Wouldn't it be cool if you could attack while in your bunny form? Or, you know, walk on water? Well, turns out you can do that in some places. Drop down a warp at the end of this bridge. Then, use the dash boots to leap off the edge and you should be back in the dark world, walking on water. As bunnies are totally known to do from time to time, right? Make your way to the shallow water and use the mirror once more. When you return, you'll be armed to the teeth, or uh, claws, or I guess whatever this particular bunny has to defend himself. You can even use the whirlpool warps if your bunny heart so desires. I'd say that's definitely not too shabby in my book. Just be careful not to dash into any walls or get hit, or you'll sink like the flipperless rabbit that you are. Here's a super easy way to access the loot stored in the Chris Houlihan room. For those of you not familiar with the Chris Houlihan room, basically Nintendo Power ran a, uh, a contest of some sort where the grand prize winner would get their name put in a super secret room in Legend of Zelda uh, Link to the Past. The room is so secret, however, that it's actually some kind of error handler for, for an invalid room. So, there you go. <laughs> it's uh, definitely a top secret room. They were not kidding. Make your way one screen west of the sanctuary. Place a bomb in front of Link so that when it blows up, it'll push him to the bottommost part of the map. Charge while you're facing upward, then quickly turn around and dash downward towards the next screen. Cancel your dash and make your way to the secret entrance alongside of the castle. You'll then be in the fable land of, uh, Houlihan. So go ahead and knit yourself an easy 200 plus rupees. Definitely not too shabby at all. Okay, if there's one thing I can say about Link, it's that walls mean nothing to this guy. To push yourself through some diagonal facing walls, hold down your sword button while facing downward. Then, rapidly tap dash and toward the wall while you're trying to clip through. It doesn't work on all walls, but it lets you get to some <laughs> interesting areas. Now, of course, having the flippers is a must for any true explorer. Haha, <laughs> flipper? I barely even know her. <laughs> I don't know what's worse, the fact that you are still watching this video, or me making these horrible puns. I don't know, you judge for yourself. <laughs> you can even use this to access the Dark World early. Of course you may need to save and quit, but it still does the job, right? 
Okay, so you didn't take my advice and get the Moon Pearl, right? And you got yourself stuck in the Dark World as a bunny. And you're tired of getting pushed around. So, what's a rabbit expected to do? Mr. Rabbit, I expect you to die. Well, all you need is a fairy, less than two health, and of course, the ability to walk on water. If you keep jumping in the water near the edge of the screen, Bunny Link will eventually start walking on water. Walk out into the deep end and let Bunny Link get beamed by an enemy. Bunny Link should kick the bucket, per normal, and then be revived by a fairy. And I guess our little fairy had a little moon pearl magic of her own, as you've come back to life in your original form. At least, until you go indoors, that is. It's still not too shabby, in my opinion. You know how difficult it is for some people to walk and talk at the same time, or <laughs> talk and drink? Well, apparently the same situation occurs with Link. Using a blue potion while walking through a doorway is apparently pretty tricky business. First off, make sure you have either less than full health or magic. Then, exactly as Link is about to transition into the next room, use the blue potion. If done correctly, you'll be taken to the flute warp screen, and then flown to your destination. Or were you? No, no, actually, you, you really weren't. Of course you weren't. In reality, you never technically left the dungeon. But it sure looks like the dungeon itself is no longer here. This is kind of like a variation of the exploration glitch. You can, however, access some of the locked doors. So if you happen to grab a boss key from, say, Dungeon A, and you found a boss key room in Dungeon B while exploring the Plaid World, you can technically unlock it for the next time you visit it in actuality. And of course, if you want to fix things up, all you gotta do is use the mirror. Definitely not too shabby. And ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, that's all for this week's Code Breaker. There are so many glitches in this game, I just couldn't fit them all in one video, so I may do another one sometime in the future. Uh, glitches like Yuzahara's uh, Bottle Adventure, and the Shovel Rang. Just really cool glitches I really didn't have a chance to put in here. You know what I'm going to ask for here? Please like, subscribe, comment down below, hit that bell icon, and feel free to share out my videos. I love it when people do that. Definitely not too shabby. Just like my Retreon crew. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. It, really, it's, it's awesome. I couldn't do this if it weren't for you guys. You guys rock. Thank you. I mean it. Thank you. Also, thank you to my regular viewers who just comment, subscribe, and just watch my videos in general. You guys are also awesome. Definitely not too shabby. Anyway, that's all from me. I'm just some retro gamer. Keep on gaming. Till next time.